hope that uh, people are really catching on to what's going on. And uh, those of us who know the Word of God, we know that as we come to the conclusion of parts of God's program, Israel plays a major role. I remember Dr. Charles E. Fuller many years ago used to say, keep your eye on Israel because Israel is God's time clock. And, uh, you know, so keep your eye on Israel. Pray for Israel. Pray for our nation. Uh, I'm amazed at, at uh, what I'm seeing and hearing from some people that just don't understand. And, uh, but it, Israel is God's chosen people. It's God's time clock. And uh, I hope that you're ready. You know, the next big event that's going to happen in history is that the trump is going to sound and the church is instantly going to leave this place. And that's an amazing event. And I'm looking forward to that. I'm hoping and praying it is in uh, my lifetime. But uh, Israel, you study Israel and you will see how God works his divine leadership in that nation. I want to bring you today to the book of Luke, the last chapter. You know, it says this, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them to all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Boy, that's a statement and a half. Do you know the, the reality of what God is talking about here? And they drew nigh unto the village whether they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they uh, constrained him in uh, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went into and to tarry with them. And it came to pass as he uh, met with them, he took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened. Oh, I like that. And his eyes were opened. And they knew him. They knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us? And I like that. If there was ever a time in history, it's when people come to the Word of God, and as they're studying the Word of God, that their soul will just catch on fire. I remember a number of years ago when uh, I was called into the ministry and we were going out preaching in the streets. You know, when you're going out preaching in the streets, your heart better be on fire. People see it. I know people see it here today, and they have different opinions about that, but I gotta tell you, you know, the Christian, his heart needs to be set on fire and needs to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
It's too late to be sitting down in, in the couch and watching some TV program. But it's time to take and get up and grab your sword and go on out there and talk with people. My goodness gracious, they're not going to kill you. God's going to protect you. God is going to be with you. If there's ever a time when the presence of God was so powerful in our lives, it's when we were preaching out in the streets and seeing people get saved. Down on Wall Street, I saw one of these men who came out of uh, his office and came out and he had a, an attache case that, my goodness gracious, looked so expensive. And uh, he started coming down the stairs and he came and he came directly to us. He had been hear hearing only a few words, but he knew he had a spiritual problem. And he put that attache uh, case down and inside that he had a pistol. He's on his way to commit suicide. What a shame. And he made wrong decisions. Well, you know, there's a lot of decisions that are made that are wrong. That if you had the word of God, the sword of the spirit, you wouldn't have that. You'd be seeking God's leadership. You'd be longing for his presence. You would be longing for souls. I, uh, we, we went to a place on Long Island and uh, the way it worked out when we got done our service the train was coming in and so we would go we'd have about 20 minutes before the train got in and we'd get out there and we'd preach and talk with people and everything else and a friend of mine you know he, he led this individual to the Lord that parking lot was with, filled with cinders and he got this guy and they got on their knees and he's receiving the Lord Jesus Christ right there. Can you imagine how his knees felt when he straightened up? No barrier. No barrier. My goodness gracious, when the opportunity comes, do not lose that opportunity. You know, eternity's for a long time. And I, I just, I am just beside myself when I see what's going on. You know, what we see in the political world, the confusion and everything else, we see in the religious world. You know, there are people that are turning their backs on the Lord Jesus Christ. God's name's not even mentioned in that church service. They're worried about singing praise songs and everything else. Well, I got to tell you, when you come into a church, it's like the temple of old. That's the presence of God that is there. And they come into that church. And what they would do, or what you should do, is to get in there and just give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer and seeking God's moving upon your heart and others and uh, praying for the minister that he would break the gospel of Jesus Christ with great power and urgency. But uh, that's not the case in many in church. But if you want a blessing... If you want to feel the nearness of God when you walk into that church, get yourself in a pew and then pray and ask God to move and stir in your heart and the heart of the rest of the people. They know that God was there. They know that the message is real and true. They know that God loves them and cares for them. There are no doubts. And there are people, oh my, there are people who sit in a congregation who are not saved, but they're there for entertainment. But I tell you, when they 
have a great message coming at them. God moves upon their heart. When everybody gets up, they come forward, and there they would take and just give their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. It would be a special time, an awesome time, a powerful time, a freedom time. And oh my, I'll tell you, what a shame to walk in and, and see empty, empty areas in front of the, the pulpit where people should be going on the altar call. My goodness gracious, it's hard to believe that people will get up and walk out the door and leave Jesus Christ behind. Then he's not important to them. And I got to tell you, that's a bad thing. You know, for years, <clears throat> I have been preaching in churches, in streets, and I have seen the power of God move in such a way. I've seen people crying as they're coming to the altar. I've seen people crying coming in as we were preaching out in the streets, seeing all kinds of things, and people would look at them funny, they just didn't understand. And here would come a guy, and here would come this individual, and the tears are pouring down. See, God is not dead. He's powerful. He's the only one that can take and save your soul. He's the only one that will change your life. He's the only one that will make you different. He's the only one. There is no other. And I'm going to tell you, and to be able to see people come to Christ in the street. You know, I, I had just gotten out of the Marines and, and I was with some friends of mine. And he said, let's, let's go on out in the street. And we did. We went out in the street. And I got to tell you, it is great. It is great. It's an experience. And once you've done it, you don't want to stop. You know, Times Square is, a, is, a, is a, a place where a lot of people go to and from and everything else. And it, it was it was. At Times Square, you would see people stop and they would take and they would listen and they would come forward. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a great time. Boy, I'll tell you, New York City needs that again. You need to get rid of some of these people you got in office. And uh, around this nation of ours, there are people whose hearts are so wicked and, you know, I tell you what, I can't understand how the leadership would take and allow people to commit crime and bring them to court and then let them go. What a, what a sinful situation that is. Well, I'll tell you, you know, it says this, and they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us while, we, while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? You know, this book, it's alive. It's real. It is absolutely real. You know, any person that wants to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you get into this book and you share it with them, it's alive. The words are alive. The Holy Spirit takes those words from the page and this take the heart. And oh, I got to tell you, to see people, we, uh, in the church that I had on Long Island, we were on the radio, been on the radio about 10 years. And uh, there was a family that lived in Brooklyn, about 50 miles away. And uh, they fought all the time. So they got in their car and they were coming out and they had the radio on. It was our, t our radio broadcast. And uh, 
the, uh, the wife convinced the husband, let's go. He dropped her off and he drove away, went around the, the, uh, the block, and it was a big block. It takes a while. And she came down and she sat on that second row, I'll never forget it, right there. And a little bit later on, here comes this guy, and he's sitting in the back row and just sitting there. And we got done preaching and everything else, and some of the people came forward. This woman got up. She came forward. She received the Lord Jesus Christ. And there were several others there. And then I saw this guy way in the back. He came, and he stood right behind her. It was her husband. She got saved that day, and so did he. And so what a day that was. That was a day of rejoicing, I'll tell you. And uh, I have seen God work in all kinds of places. I've seen it work. I've seen it work with people who are going through difficult times, thinking that they're going to get divorced or what have you, thinking their world is over. And then I, I, I've seen as we sat there and as we opened the scriptures and we shared with them, there is a newness of life that comes when Christ comes in. And uh, to be able to sit by that table and see hands come together and a husband and wife get together again, or when you're sitting in a jail or on, out in the streets where, you know, I, I was, uh, uh, for Christmas, we used to go around to the churches and we would get uh, some clothes, some toys for the kids of those who are incarcerated. And we, uh, my wife and I went to a place and we, we knocked on the door and there was a little girl that came to the door, and I was holding the biggest panda bear you could ever see. Her eyes got about that big, and it was exciting to see that. And uh, we saw the woman, and everything else talked with her, and brought the stuff in. And three days later, uh, three weeks later, her husband got out of jail, and she was already staying with another guy. And he killed him. He walked into the house and he killed him, shot him. And uh, he left. You know, it's amazing that little girl saw that. How vicious, how cruel, how horrible that is. And, uh, you know, sin takes a person and takes them in a direction they might not think that they're going to go. But I've met people that sin had taken them. I remember a family, they were taking and using drugs. I went into a house, uh, an apartment, and I had a good time there in this little apartment place in Appomattox. And you know, uh, I was supposed to go see a guy there, but there were four or five apartments before I got to his. I knocked on every single door and I had tracts and Gospel of John and I gave it and then I talked with people. I had the privilege of leading two or three families to the Lord there. And the guy that I was supposed to go see, he was supposed to be a real tough guy. You know what? Power melts when you come into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we led him to the Lord. And I, I am so thankful that God opened that door for us to be able to take and get in and see people. People who won't go there. They're afraid. You know? And not me. I just went right there and I, I just had a super time. And uh, I went to a house in... Uh, I think it was Concord, and uh, I had led their daughter to the Lord. Their daughter was one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. 
behind bars. And so I had the privilege of leading her to the Lord and she asked me to go see mom and dad. So I went and I saw mom and dad. And the thing that amazed me, they had a coffee table in the living room and on that coffee table was cocaine, it was pills, it was other stuff out there, and it just covered the top of that table. And he was proud of the fact, he told me, he said, you know, when, when my daughter started to run down and she needed more drugs, I told her, I know what I'm doing, I'll go get the drug for you and I'll do this. And so she had to go to prison for at least 25 years. And to me, what a shame that was. And here's mom and dad. They're pushing drugs in the living room. And we were talking with them about Jesus Christ. And uh, drugs will deaden your senses. Drugs will turn your mind off. And so I, I saw the dad, and the mom was another thing. We led her to the Lord, but the dad, grandfather, no, this was all turned off. And, uh, you know, he was nice, not rude, but he had no part of it. You know, I, to me, it's a shame. You've got the answer right here before your eyes. And if you want a life that will change you, if you want a life that's filled with God's presence, his peace, his love, his joy, filling your heart, then you need to get into this book. You need to get into the Word of God. You know, over the years, uh, this has been one of the greatest treasures in my life. Because when I go there, I find out God loves me. God cares for me. God cares for my family. And if you are depressed and down for some reason, you can go there and you can get into the Word and God will lift you right up out of that miry clay and set your feet on a solid rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. You know, I hope that you will turn your life over to Jesus Christ. That's what you have to do. I'm going to have a word of prayer. Lord, uh, we pray for those who are listening, and we pray if there is someone who has opened their heart to you, we just pray, Lord, that uh, you would enter their heart, and you would just fill their life, and lead them and guide them. Lord, we ask this in your precious name. Amen.